Good morning and welcome. This is my basement. I had some trouble doing the liturgy in another place. And so I've had to do it today from my basement. Uh, so excuse me uh, for not um, being in full garb or or um, at the church. I apologize. Um, so a few announcements before our service begins. Uh, the first is this Bible study has begun on the book of Romans. If you want to join us, the link will be sent on our Sunday scoop. And uh, you can also email me and I can send you the link directly. The questions are available also on our Sunday scoop. My second announcement is this. Um, we pray, we are meeting in church once again. So if you'd like to join us for in-person worship, we welcome you. Uh, but if you still feel like, hey, I don't feel safe coming in, I totally understand. We bless you in that decision. And uh, we're so glad that you're worshiping with us here online. The third is this, and it's more uh, personal for about me. Uh, we're starting a chess club. Uh, with me and this one other person in our community in Bath, if you'd like to participate in playing chess, <laughs> reach out to me. We would love to play chess with you uh, um, every once a week. Okay, our service is about to begin. So would you take a moment to calm your hearts and your mind? You invite the Holy Spirit into this space, into your home, and would you say this with me? Come, Holy Spirit. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just. He will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 1 John chapter 1, verse 8 and 9. Therefore, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not done, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. The Lord is our refuge and strength. Oh, come, let us worship.
to join me in saying the Vinaiti. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with songs. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord our maker, for he is our God and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. At this time, we'll have the proclamation of the word followed by our sermon. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. From whom all blessings flow Praise Him, all creatures here below Praise Him above the heavenly host Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost And welcome. This is the part of the service where we reflect on the Word of God. We learn what it means to apply to our own lives. Okay, now, how many of you, if you had known about Amazon prior to 2020, would hop on that stock like two years ago, right? How many of you, if you were younger and you knew who Be- Jeff Bezos was going to become, would somehow find a way to befriend him if you're like, you know, in his vicinity or something, right? In 2020, Amazon stock rose Three times the price, tripled in 2020. In 2021, Jeff Bezos became the world's richest man, far surpassing, far surpassing Bill Gates. Now, in our gospel this morning, you're going to hear James and, ja- uh, James and John ask a question of Jesus. And they're going to ask this question because they believe he's a rising stock. He's going to be a great person. In fact, he's going to be king of the world. And they want to hop on that glory with him. They're going to ask, we want to sit on your left and on your right in glory. Now, the other disciples get really annoyed when they ask this. Why? Now, not because they thought the question was wrong or arrogant of them, because they're like, we missed that chance to ask them. We should have asked first. You should just before what you're going to hear today, Jesus has told the disciples, ask for anything in my name and I'll give it to you. And James and John are like, well, this is the perfect opportunity. Okay, we're going to ask. We want to be with you in glory because we want to make an impact. We want to be influential. We want to have a legacy. We want to be great. Now, what's interesting is that Jesus doesn't attack their desire to be great. He just reroutes their path on how to get to greatness. 
Let me say that one more time. Jesus doesn't attack our desire for greatness. Rather, he reroutes our path on how to become great, how to become influential, how to become good. See, Jesus wants us to be great, influential, make an impact and all of that. But what's important to Jesus is that he wants us to take a root that will lead to greatness according to the kingdom of God. Greatness as defined by Jesus. And that is what he is going to teach us this morning. That is how he's going to respond to James and John. So let's hear our gospel this morning on Mark chapter 10, verses 35 to 45. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, come forward to him and they ask him, Teacher, we want to do, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. And Jesus said to them, Well, what is it you want me to do? And they said to him, Well, grant us to sit, one on your right and one on your left, in your glory. But Jesus said to them, You do not know what you're asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink? Or be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? And they replied, were able. Then Jesus said to them, the cup that I drink, you will drink. The baptism from which, with which I am baptized, you will be baptized. But to sit at my right and my left is not mine to grant, but it is for those for whom it was prepared. When the 10 heard this, they began to be angry with James and John. So Jesus called them and said to them, you know, that among the Gentiles, those whom they recognize as their, as their rulers lord it over them, and their great ones are tyrants over them. But not so among you. But whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever, whoever wishes to be first among you must be slave to all. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. The gospel of Christ, praise to you, O Lord Jesus Christ. Did you hear the answer? What is the root to greatness? Jesus says servanthood. Listen to what he says. When you look at how this world operates and the people that are in power over others, recognize this, that they lord it over them. And the great ones are tyrants over them, but not so among you. And this is the moment that Jesus defines what it means to be a leader, to be great in the kingdom of God. And it might sound oxymoronic, but listen to what he says. But not so among you, but whoever wishes to be great or a leader among you must be your servant. And you want to be great? You have to be a servant of all. Do you want to be first? You have to be a slave of all. You said leaders. Of this world, Jesus says, are self-righteous, self-serving, but rather a leader in the kingdom of God. One who is great in the kingdom of God is a servant leader. For just as Son of Man came to serve and not be served, so also you must learn to serve and not be served. In order for you to lead and be great, you ought to be a servant of all. So this morning, I want to just speak a few words of encouragement to you on how to be a servant leader. I want to talk about the difference between being a leader according to Jesus and a leader as we know it, according to the standards of this world. So three really quick points. One, a self-righteous leader is impressed with big things, you know, like James and John, who want to be beside Jesus in glory. A servant leader, on the other hand, does not despise the small things like Jesus who is concerned for the one. So let me read to you from Luke chapter 16, verse 10. Jesus says, Whoever can be trusted with very little can be trusted with much. But whoever is dishonest with very little will also be dishonest with much. You know, there are a few folks that I'm a bit weary of, a bit leery of. You know, the folks that show up in big events and conferences so they can network, right? And they shake hands. Like they want to show off just how important they are. But they aren't there in their small day-to-days. If I call them up and ask them for a favor, they'll say, oh, I'm a little busy right now. But they'll show up for the big festivities, like a politician, right? Who's there for the ribbon cutting, cutting and the galas, but they don't show up and they won't talk to the people that they're serving. 
See, an indication of a true servant leader is a person who can handle the small stuff. Servant leaders don't despise the small things. To be great in the kingdom of God, you have to be concerned with the small things. One pastor says this, You know, there are people who are incredibly skilled all over this world, but they're not good stewards. You see, stewards get excited about the little things. They care for the little seed, and they'll care for it, and they'll germinate it into something big. They're caretakers. They see the big picture, but they can zero in on the small thing they're tasked to steward. Servant leaders see the potential in the small. Servant leadership does not despise small things. Point number two, self-righteous leadership has a heart for recognition, but a servant leader has a heart for people. Let me tell you a story of a man who arrived in 1953 at the Chicago Railroad Station. He stepped off the train. He was a tall man with bushy hair and a big mustache. And as the cameras flashed and city officials approached him with outstretched arms, they did to shake his hand and he thanked them politely. See, he noticed someone on the station platform heading towards the bus. And he asked, you know, with all these cameramen and all of these uh, welcoming party to just excuse him for a minute. He walked through the crowd to a side to help an elderly lady struggling with two large suitcases. He picked them up. He smiled at her. He escorted her to the bus, helped her get on, and wished her a safe journey. His name was Albert Schweitzer, a theologian, an author, an organist, a physician, a polymath. And he turned to the crowd and he apologized to them for keeping them waiting to help this older lady. You see, he had arrived on that morning in Chicago to receive the Nobel Peace Prize. And it was reported that morning. This was the report, uh, the newspaper article title or the report title. This is the first time I ever saw a sermon walking. He knew what it meant to be a servant leader. He knew what it meant to be great in the kingdom of God. He knew that he, ha- that he had a heart for people as opposed to a heart that longed for recognition. You see, servant leaders don't care to be recognized, don't care for power and prestige, but they have a heart for people. They have a deep care for humans. Self-righteous leaders, on the other hand, the tyrants of this world, will do anything for influence will, to show off how great they are, which includes stepping on, on top of so many other people to get credit. But servant leaders serve those who have been entrusted in their care. They do little things in secret for the success of others. In Matthew chapter 6, Jesus says, When you do something, don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. So the God who sees you will reward you. What he's saying is this. If you're serving if you're in a position of status and power in society, then when you're serving or doing good, don't do it for the recognition from people because then that's your reward. You've been recognized. But servant leaders serve those, serve knowing that God is watching them. They're, they want their recognition from God. And so they will serve people without wanting recognition, without needing applause. And God says he will bless them beyond what they can ask or imagine. So servant leaders have a heart for people and not a heart for recognition. And finally, my third point is this. Self-righteous leaders fluctuate with feelings, but servant leaders lead faithfully. It's my final point. You see, sometimes it's hard to be a leader. It's hard to serve, to be in a position where you've been given people entrusted to you. And sometimes it gets us down when the church isn't doing too well. Sometimes it gets us down when we don't succeed in the initiatives that we've taken. It's frustrating and it's honestly, it's so disheartening. 
In all these things, the servant leader does not fluctuate with feelings, but leads faithfully. By which I mean this. A servant leader leans on God and is faithful to what God has called her to do. Their faith is rooted in Jesus. See, they may have bounce of happiness when things go well and just incredible sadness when things don't go their way. But they're faithful to their calling to what God has said and called them to. Both in the highs and the lows, in the success and the failures, they know that they can lean and be faithful to the one who is steadfast. Servant leaders lead faithful to their calling. See, God doesn't want perfection. He wants faithfulness. And a servant leader leads faithfully to what God has called them to. So, three points. Servant leaders do not despise small things. In fact, they steward the small and see the potential in the big. Servant leaders have a heart for people, not a heart for recognition. They do it because they care for them, because God cares for them. They're God's people. And finally, servant leaders lead faithfully, leaning on God. But how can we practice servant leadership? Right? I've given you this concept. But now, let me give you some practical applications to put those concepts into play in your day-to-day lives. I'll conclude with a few applications. One, we remember that God isn't looking for perfect people, but faithful people. Servant leaders always remember, well, look, God chose 12 fishermen, broken people, and he saw faith in them, not perfection. So even when we don't feel up to a task, we don't feel perfectly equipped, I want you to remember something that was told to me as I began my ministry. God does not choose the equipped. He equips the chosen. God does not choose the equipped. He equips the chosen. He's not looking for perfectly equipped, skilled people. He's looking for people that are faithful to him and he'll equip them to do the job he's called them to do. Two, second application. We ought to cultivate optimism. See, I find that optimism is so crucial to servant leadership because it opens our heart and eyes to see what God is doing. Optimism says, Lord, I can't wait for you to come through. I can't wait for the Holy Spirit to move. Optimism says, God, I wonder what you're doing in this season of my life. When things are going slow, are you calling me to rest, God? When things are going really fast and we're really anxious and stressed, we say, God, are you calling me to something greater? We ought to cultivate optimism as servant leadership because it creates curiosity. It seeks God out in all circumstances. And three, servant leaders, and this is important, servant leaders seek for roles that they can use their time, their talents, and their treasures in for the sake of the glory of God in his kingdom. Which means they look for opportunities to serve in the church. They look for opportunities to serve in their small groups. They look for opportunities to pray. They look and seek for opportunities that they can give glory to God through what they do. Servant leadership. Servant leaders find opportunities to serve and lead in the power of God. So three applications. God does not call the equipped. He equips the called. Two, we ought to cultivate optimism for it creates curiosity and longs to see God in action. And three, servant leaders seek roles in the kingdom of God for the glory of God. If this is something, if this sermon has encouraged you in any way, and you feel like, hey, I want to serve in the church in a capacity, or I want to be a leader in the kingdom of God, reach out to me, reach out to our wardens. We would love to get in touch with you. Would you join me in a word of prayer as we conclude our lesson today? Heavenly Father, you are good. You are the ultimate servant leader. For you came to serve, you washed our feet, you died on the cross for us. Lord, help us emulate you in what we do. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And all of God's children said, Amen. God bless you. The service continues. 
Our service this morning continues with the affirmation of our faith. This is what we believe. Join me in saying the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived of the Virgin Mary and suffered under Pontius Pilate. He was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the, end, and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You join me in praying for our church and our community. Heavenly Father, you are good. You have come to serve us. And so, Lord, we pray that we would be a blessing to others by serving those in need. Give us hearts that conform to your will. Give us eyes to see what you have want us to do. And give us arms and legs to move in your way. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, you are so good. And you are so much help a source of peace and comfort in our lives. Lord, we pray that during these times of upheaval, chaos, and a pandemic, that you'd keep us safe, you'd give us your sense of peace, you'd give us your comfort, and that we would find our refuge and strength in you. Lord, hear our prayer. We at this time pray for St. John's and Bath, for the leadership team, for the congregation, for all those who seek to do your glory through your church, Lord, empower them in the power of your Holy Spirit. Lead us in a way according to your will, so that your name may be glorified. Lord, we pray for our church in St. Albans, our St. Albans Church in Odessa, that you would lead us according to your will, that our presence in the community would reach out and do good and empower and strengthen what you have called not just our church, but Odessa to be. We pray for the kids in our church. Bless them. Let them grow to be mature young men and women of the Lord. We pray for the parents and the grandparents in our churches. We pray that you would strengthen them, that they would be able to raise their kids and their grandkids in the faith. Help them be servant leaders to their children and their grandkids. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for our bishop, all the churches around the world, and for all those who are missionaries and are proclaiming the gospel faithfully in this world, we ask that your kingdom come, that your will be done in and through them. Empower their speech, empower their actions, empower their lives to be a witness to what you, to who you are. This we ask in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Join me in praying once more for those who are watching us online around the world and in Canada. Lord, we pray for all of us who are watching online around the world, in Canada, in Ontario, and everywhere. Let this message be of encouragement to them. Let your words sink deep in their hearts so they may see you and serve you faithfully. Speak to them. Let the Holy Spirit burn in their lives. This we ask in your Son, Jesus Christ's mighty name. Amen. Now gathering all our prayers into one. To join us in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forevermore. God bless you. We'll see you soon.
make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. The Lord bless you. His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn His face toward you and give you peace. Children and the children, and the children. May His favor be upon. 